Protected dugongs and sea turtles are being cruelly slaughtered in Queensland's Torres Strait to supply an illegal meat trade. An investigation by 7.30 has found deeply confronting footage that we are about to air. It shows the brutal methods used to hunt the animals, with turtles being butchered alive and dugongs drowned as they're dragged behind boats. The investigation throws into sharp relief the conflict between Indigenous Australians and animal rights activists over traditional hunting and exposes a black market in animal meat. And a warning, this report by Sarah Dingle and producer Leslie Robinson contains disturbing images and coarse language. At the northernmost tip of Australia lie the serene islands and waters of Queensland's Torres Strait the birthplace of native title. But on those beaches, there's a slaughter underway. 7.30 travelled to far north Queensland, where IT entrepreneur turned eco-warrior Rupert Imphoff has been investigating the fate of threatened turtle and dugong populations. And what he found is shocking. A turtle lies tethered for up to three days, waiting to die. They dragged it out of the water, flipped it on its back. You could see it was already terrorised, it was flapping around madly. And they came up with this concrete block and basically tried to slam it in the head, obviously to stun the animal. It didn't quite work. The images become even more confronting. Before they started hacking off its fins, they wanted to check if it was pregnant. And sure enough, this turtle was a mature age turtle, had up to 125 eggs in it. Could, was going to be the next generation of turtles, but they decided to cut it up right there and then. Even as it's hacked, the turtle clings to life, apparently in agony, for seven and a half minutes. Didn't actually die until they took off the bottom shell, actually peeled off the shell and then it just let out one gasp, one last gasp of air and passed away. Using a hidden camera, Rupert Imhoff spent two weeks in the Torres Strait filming the hunting of sea turtle and dugong, which are both listed as vulnerable to extinction. They go out, they spear them at sea, they then tie the tail to the back of the boat and they hold the head underwater. And it can take up to seven and a half minutes again, so I've been told, for that dugong to drown. Here, a dugong is methodically carved up for consumption. For anyone else, this kill would be illegal, as dugong are protected under federal law. However, the Native Title Act allows traditional owners to hunt to satisfy their personal, domestic or non-commercial communal needs. Anywhere else in Australia, this horrific cruelty would be illegal. But in Queensland alone, native title hunting is exempt from animal cruelty laws. Animal rights activists are appalled. Lawyer Rebecca Smith was a paid consultant on the turtle and dugong hunt for the Torres Strait Regional Authority. Most conservation groups won't touch this issue. It's too hard, too prickly, too sensitive. It's often deemed people who are opposed to traditional hunting are often called racist, but there's nothing racist about saying, this is cruel, we'll move on from there, we'll do this humanely now, we've progressed. Aerial surveys of dugong and turtle numbers are imperfect and no one knows exactly how many there are. Green sea turtles face an extra pressure. They're by far the turtle species most intensively hunted for their meat. But locals say there are bigger threats for turtle and dugong. You know, we are under threat from pig predation, our, one of the greatest, biggest rookeries in the southern hemisphere on Cape York, Rain Island, is under threat from climate change, but we seem to be concentrating, I think, far too much on, you know, 
indigenous people hunting them. What is known is that the Great Barrier Reef is a last stronghold. It's home to the biggest sea turtle rookery in the globe and one of the world's largest population of dugong. Cairns-based Colin Riddell calls himself the dugong man. A former abattoir worker, he's an unlikely but tireless campaigner for animal rights. I have to pursue it to the end because otherwise the end may be for the animals. Colin Riddell's investigations have revealed the slaughter goes on far to the south in coastal Queensland waters. Green Island is one of the jewels in the crown of Cairns tourism. We've been told just last week at this spot, Indigenous hunters chased down and took a green sea turtle in full view of shock tourists. There's no way of knowing where those hunters came from, but locals say this is a weekly occurrence on this island. They can be out there a lot, you know, three, four, five times a week. They come across in, in quite large uh, tinnies with large outboard motors on board and they chase the turtles till they're completely and utterly exhausted. The culture clash between hunters and tourists has led to heated confrontations. This is our land. Yeah. We listen to your shit, man. We can do anything on this land we want to do, man. This video was shot two weeks ago by a tourist and given to 7.30. It shows an altercation between a tour boat and three indigenous hunters. It's not clear what they're hunting for, but there's no mistaking the tensions. Is there a sense uh, in, in your area that the indigenous hunters are untouchable? Without a doubt, and, and they believe they're untouchable. But there are conservation efforts. Well away from the glitzy marinas and the tourist strip, here in the industrial area of Cairns is the town's only turtle rehabilitation centre. It's run on the smell of an oily rag. Here, injured and starving turtles are treated and brought back to full health. <laughs> so cute. Yeah. Yep. Today, Jenny Gilbert and her team are readying a 180 kilogram breeding age female green sea turtle for release. By the look of things, this 80-year-old turtle has already survived a number of hazards. Tell me about this dent. What does that say to you? That says to me that's a spear hole. That's Turtles exactly like this are being hunted, not traditionally, but for a very modern purpose. Our investigations have revealed the hunt is feeding a flourishing black market. Well, nine times out of ten, the illegal trade is to sell, is to sell the meat um, for the benefit for grog money or drugs. You know, that's... And can you make a buck out of it? Yes. There's one person that we know of in Yarrabah that made $80,000 one year. To, to hatch out. James Especially Epong is a Mandaburra man who lives on his traditional hole. lands an hour it south of Cairns and Yarrabah. The Mandaburra have declared a moratorium on taking turtle and dugong from their sea country but around them, the illegal meat trade continues. I myself went to a pub on a Friday afternoon to go and have a cold with one of my mates and was approached by some other Indigenous people with cryvac meat for sale, was... which was turtle and dugon. On four separate occasions, 7.30 has confirmed multiple eskies arriving on the afternoon flight from Horn Island to Cairns. Do not know 100% for a fact what was in those eskies, but I have heard numerous reports and been told by the islanders themselves that they are transporting uh, excess, an excessive amount of turtle and dugong down to Cairns. Now, on my flight, I think there was about six or seven eskies that come off, and I've been told that is almost a daily routine. Indigenous sea rangers are employed and equipped by governments to care for marine wildlife. This esky was addressed to a ranger. From what I understand and what I observed and what I spoke to the islands about is the head hunters on all these islands are actually the rangers themselves. Now this money has gone into their pockets. It's going to help them buy outboard motors and help them 
basically go and hunt these turtle and jig them down in bigger numbers. Were any of the people you saw hunting and killing animals rangers? Yes, they were, 100%. Did you pay those people in your footage to do what they were doing? We did not pay a single person any money while we were up there. And the illegal trade continues further south. I know that there's a lot of non-Indigenous people that are doing it. Are they doing the well. hunting or are they involved in another They're involved with the trading or not selling it and passing it down. And some of the turtle meats has gone far down in Sydney and Melbourne. And it's not just dugong and turtle meat being sold. Is it dugong tusk? Dugong rib bone. Traditional owners from Cape York are pushing to end the indiscriminate slaughter and stop the esky trade. We don't have that kind of legislative uh, assistance to do that. What do you do when you confront a rogue killer? And we've heard a lot of people talk about rogue killers. Who are these rogue killers? They're there. Who are they? They know who they are. For those with native title rights, customs can change. We're going to name this turtle Bumbida. Uh, after our grandmother. But the Mandaburra people at least have sworn to protect these animals. Sarah Dingle with that report produced by Leslie Robinson. And 7.30 contacted the Queensland Department of Environment and Resource Management. In a statement, it said it takes the claims very seriously and will investigate all reports of illegal hunting and poaching. And if you want to track the sea turtle released at the end of that story, go to our website and follow the links.